Hey guys, what is up? My name is Panamaster and 2023 is right around the corner. That being said, it's time for the obligatory most anticipated list. I'm going to be going over my top 10 most anticipated games of 2023. Does my list align with you guys is let me know down in the comments. Let's have a discussion and get excited because honestly, this list was really hard to make. There's a lot of great games coming out in 2023. And so here are my personal top 10 picks that I cannot wait for. Coming in at number 10, we've got Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. I'm a diehard Avatar fan. I always have been. I don't care. You can, you know, complain all you want. You can say the story's mid, whatever. I don't care. I'm going to enjoy it because I do and I don't need you to enjoy it. You do you. I'm going to sit here in my bag enjoying this awesome experience that is James Cameron's Avatar. Yes, The Last Airbender is also good. I can enjoy both, you know, <laughs> but Frontiers of Pandora is the Avatar game I've always wanted. We still know very little about it. It probably isn't even going to come out in 2023. It got pushed out of 2022 into 2023 or 2024, according to Ubisoft. But Massive completely knocked it out of the ballpark with The Division 2. And obviously, this is a very different game. But as also the developers of the first Division, they've taken an L before. They've learned from their mistakes. So I'm really hoping all the things they've learned from their past video games will translate over and just provide us with a truly awesome video game experience in the world of Avatar because we've been sorely lacking that. And I played the original game on the Wii, my guys. I played the Avatar video game. It left some stuff to be desired. Let's be real here. So I'm really excited to see what they can come up with because this world is absolutely ripe with opportunity for video game format. And I'm just really excited to see what they'll come up with. Also, you know, go watch The Way of Water if you haven't already. It's a banger. I don't care what anybody says. Coming in at number nine, we've got Assassin's Creed Mirage. I love Assassin's Creed. Anybody who knows me knows I love this franchise. I love everything about it, but let's be real here. Peak Assassin's Creed is and might always be two in Brotherhood. Those are the goats. Like, you know, there's plenty of great games. You know, one is still great. Revelations is great. Y'all need to shut up if you, you know, it's still great. It's still great. Three is great. Four is great. You know, all those action adventure games, they really didn't miss until you started getting, you know, past four and it starts to decline a little bit. And then they moved away and went to the RPGs. And I think all of the RPGs are great. I love Origins, Odyssey, Valhalla. They're all great games, but I miss that peak Assassin's Creed era. And Mirage sounds like it's trying to go back to that. It's an actual stealth action adventure game going back to the roots. They're dropping the RPG stuff and they're still doing that and other things, you know, like they've got all these other Assassin's Creed projects in the works, but Mirage is claiming to be a bit of a return to form for the franchise in terms of that nostalgic upbringing we're used to from the old Assassin's Creed. There's also rumors that it's going to be coming with a remake of the first game in the season pass. And so, you know, they're using a lot of assets together. And so kind of, I'm kind of seeing this as a spiritual successor to the first game specifically. Now, obviously there's going to be a lot of differences and stuff, but I'm really excited because it's been like seven years since the last action adventure Assassin's Creed game. Now, obviously they were getting pretty stale uh, where they were, you know, even though I think that Syndicate is an underrated game, but you know, it was getting stale, right? So it's going to be interesting to see just how new and different Mirage is going to be when they've had all this time for, you know, the genre to advance and technology and all this stuff. So I'm really excited. And I think the future of Assassin's Creed is very bright. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to take that as a W. I'm sorry. But yeah, that comes out sometime this year. Really excited for it. Moving on to number eight. It's Alan Wake 2, baby. I 
was flabbergasted when this game got announced. I mean, I was flabbergasted when AWE was announced as a DLC for Control because AWE, everybody was like, Alan Wake, Alan Wake. And I was like, ha, that's funny. That's funny. That's really funny. But it can't be. It be, bro. I still, to this day, don't know anybody. I think Gabe played Alan Wake. For those that know Gabe, um, I believe he played Alan Wake. He might be the only person I know that's played that game. I've been telling people for years and years to play Alan Wake. It's one of the goats, but I don't know anybody who played it. I simply just played and enjoyed and was like, this is a banger of a game. And I never got any announcement for a sequel. And I just was fine with, I guess, Alan Wake's American Nightmare, which let's be honest, that game was so mid. Um, <laughs> Wasn't even really meant to be a sequel or anything either, though. So let's let's be real here. But when they announced Style and Wake for Control, I was like, no way. Absolutely not. And then they just announced a sequel. And I'm, like, ah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I don't know if this is actually going to come out this year. We haven't heard anything for a while, but they could also just be really hard at work on it. But either way, Remedy are kings in their respective little area of the video game verse and i have no doubts this game is going to be absolutely amazing and cannot wait to experience the world of alan wake once more and coming in at number seven we've got hogwarts legacy now this one's going to test i i i was wondering if i should even put it on the list but i'm like i'm gonna stick true to myself i'm going to be honest because yeah i'm excited for this game now here's the thing i have a, a word to say to my jk rowling you know haters here's the thing i want to make it perfectly clear i'm gonna i'm gonna make my stance perfectly clear fuck jk rowling fuck her she's a transphobic bitch i'm yeah, sorry for the language but it's true i'm i don't i'm not even gonna apologize for that because she's a horrible human being and there's the huge debate about separating art from the artist, but the big thing here is JK Rowling's getting a paycheck from this game, right? And so if you buy the game, you support her. Now, my point, and I'm gonna try to keep this as concise as possible, but my point is you could not give JK Rowling a penny for the rest of her life. Let her fade into obscurity, not give her a penny. She's still gonna be perfectly fine. I want y'all to consider Harry Potter as a brand, as an IP, this wizarding world, how much money it's made in the last 20 plus years. She's set. It does not matter whether we give her money or not. She will have a presence in the world. Now, if you guys actually want to help this situation and keep her from making transphobic comments and having that platform, why don't you guys focus on getting rid of her platform to spew that bullshit nonsense why don't you keep her off of the the headlines keep her out of the articles stop giving her the attention because it doesn't matter whether you give her money or not it's not going to change anything it's getting her out of that space is taking away her platform and letting her fade into obscurity because the money part is going to be a constant whether you like it or not and there are people that are saying, if you buy Hogwarts Legacy, you are a transphobe. Well, guess what? I'm going to buy Hogwarts Legacy. I'm going to make a trans character because you can in the game. Because, again, J.K. Rowling had nothing to do with Hogwarts Legacy. Absolutely nothing. And so I'm going to make a trans character. They're going to be a baddie, non-binary king or queen, whatever they want to be. And I'm going to have them kick ass because that's what i can do in this game because the developers are not transphobes and the developers don't want anything to do with jk rowling it's just simply because they you know she owns the brand she has to like she gets money it's nothing they can do about it but the developers have made it clear that they don't want anything to do with that situation and that they support the trans community and it's a disservice to the developers who simply care about this work of art that was created by a horribly batshit person and, and that's as simple as that and so if if you're gonna call me a transphobe for playing this game 
that is something I've wanted for decades and being able to experience it. Whatever, man, you do you. But um, I don't think playing this game automatically makes you a transphobe. I think your actions, you know, will show whether or not you're a transphobe. And I'd hope that my actions show otherwise. But if you got a problem with that, why don't you get off your entitled high horse and get some bitches? I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, but Hogwarts Legacy is going to be the shit and I'm going to be playing it day one. Next, moving on to number six, it's Starfield, which normally I would think a Bethesda game would be a lot higher than six. But one, there's just a lot of games coming out this year that I'm super excited for. And two, I, I mean, it, this is a new IP. It's something we don't really know a ton about. We finally got our first deep dive into it um, last year at E3, quote unquote E3, um, you know, Microsoft's little showcase. So we we got a little something and I'm not going to lie. I know a lot of people were pretty eh about what they saw, but I was super excited just for the potential of Starfield. And I think that's why it's on this list in general, really. Like, obviously, Bethesda has all this, you know, res earned respect from their catalog. But just looking at the game itself, really, most of the hype is around Starfield's potential. It has a lot of potential. And I think at the absolute worst, this game could just be OK. But I don't I don't think there's a chance that this is going to be a bad game. I think that this is just it's 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 going to be something good. And, you know, it's going to sell Xboxes because it's not coming to PlayStation. So that'll be really interesting. It's supposed to come in the first half of the year. I think we'll get that, hopefully. But um, yeah, it's going to be a big deal. So. I'll be there. Next up, number five, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I haven't even beaten Fallen Order yet. That's my goal is to get it before this game comes out, like to get through the game. But I played a ton of it. It's amazing. It's it's like baby's first Dark Souls, but with rock solid gameplay and amazing Star Wars lightsaber stuff. It's it's the return of good Star Wars games, you know? We have had mid to bad Star Wars games for the last 10 plus years. You know, Battlefront 2, it, it finally got there. Um, it, that was all right, but you know, it, it even launched super mid. And so it, it's refreshing to have this amazing narrative Star Wars game in our midst. And now we're getting a sequel. And I cannot wait to see all the different things that they've, you know, added to the game, improved upon the game, see where the story goes. Again, I'm, I'm less concerned about that now because I don't even know where the story of the first game went completely because I never finished it. But I'm working on it. Don't worry about it. I'm working on it. But I'm still super excited for Jedi Survivor. It's going to be a really fun spring game, and I'm excited for it. I think it's in a really good spot, you know, in March because May is kind of a big deal. This year, for some reason, June is going to be huge for video games. I don't know if we've ever had that before, but I'm hoping it's in a good spot where I can just devote a bunch of time to it. Not a lot of games around it. And have a good time. Coming in at number four, it's Spider-Man 2. I struggle even putting it at number four. I feel like it should be higher, but Spider-Man's one of the best superhero games ever made. And then Miles Morales, I think, is arguably even better. I know it's a shorter experience, but because of that, all the fluff is just cut out and it's concise. It's to the point. There's plenty of stuff to do still. It's still like, I think it took me like 25 hours to platinum, which is a lot of gamers are like <laughs> that's nothing, but I'm sorry, I have an adult life and do adult things, but that's still a good chunk of time for me to experience everything there is to experience in that game. So I love both. I actually just bought Miles Morales on sale on Steam, so now I can 100% it all over again. So why not? Because it's so good. And so I'm really excited to see. They obviously learned a lot from the first game, showed that in Miles Morales. So now I'm excited to see them take all those lessons they've learned over both and put it into a, a full sequel. See all the cool things they can come up with. It's going to be nuts. It's going to be insane. I'm very excited. I'm excited to see Venom and Craven. It's just. Yeah, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. I'll eat it up regardless. But the fact that Insomniac are just truly the goats, like, ah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Moving on to number three. It's Final Fantasy 16. Now, let me call out the stuff, you know, 
The developers of this game saying that they don't have black people because it's not historically accurate when they have all these dragons and fantasy creatures and stuff is total BS. Let's let's be real here. Like there's some low key racist stuff going on at that studio. I'm not even going to try to hide that. However, it's Final Fantasy, man. Oh, my God. Final Fantasy 15 is one of my favorite games of all time. I know people dog on it. I understand reasons for not liking it. I love it. It made me cry twice. I love the stories of Final Fantasy. I loved Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Um, I actually just bought the original Final Fantasy and I'm gonna play it on my buddy's Steam Deck. So I was gonna do that, but I still don't have a Steam Deck because I'm broke. So I'm just gonna use my buddies because I feel like it's the perfect place to play those pixel remasters on. But I'm planning on playing through the entire Final Fantasy franchise. That being said, I'm so excited for 16. It looks incredible. I'm excited to get into this world and discover the narrative. I, I think the gameplay is very fun in Final Fantasy. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it's bad, but it's just the engrossing world building narrative in these games that is so near and dear to my heart. I think it is spectacular and I cannot wait for this game to come out. And I, I believe it's one of the June ga games, if I am thinking correctly. Um, so it's another, you know, it's going to be one of them heavy hitters up with Diablo and something else. But um, I'm going to be there day one. Day one. Next up at number two. It's Resident Evil 4. Everybody knows I am a Resident Evil head. If it weren't for the number one, this would be my most anticipated game. I love Resident Evil so much. And... As much as I desperately want them to make a Code Veronica remake, and I think it deserved it so much more than 4 did, because 4 still holds up, um, I'm gonna still take it. Like, I'm not gonna say, you know, screw this, no more Resident Evil I, until you do Code Veronica or we riot. Like, I'm not gonna be like that. I'm just gonna continue w wishing for Capcom to remake Code Veronica, but I'm gonna eat this up. And I'm really excited to see. I was a little disappointed that it's coming to PlayStation 4. I don't believe it's actually coming to Xbox One. I think it's only coming to PS4 in terms of last gen. Um, but I I wish they didn't handicap themselves like that. But whatever. I mean, I'm still really excited to see what they do with the technology. I'm hoping we see a big leap because I think that was the biggest issue with Resident Evil 3 is that it, it kind of felt like they just took all the assets they had from two and copied it over as much as they could. Um, it doesn't seem like they're doing that, especially because four is such a different game from two and three. Um, but I'm excited to see what kind of significant changes they make here. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited because Resident Evil is amazing and I'm glad to see that it's actually really back now. You know, it, it's been back for a little while, but it's just, you know, it's nice to have that sort of faith in the franchise again after so many years of darkness. <laughs> it's great to be back. And finally, before I get to my number one pick, we'll do some honorable mentions real quick. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I didn't want to put two Final Fantasies in here, but come on. I have a feeling this game might get delayed into 2024, but like... I'm really excited because it sounds like with this remake, they're really trying to diverge off of the path of the first game and kind of go into their own thing. So I'm really excited to see how this one goes. The Wolf Among Us 2, I was really sad not to put this on the actual list, but Wolf Among Us is one of the most underrated adventure games out there. It might even be the best game Telltale's put out. I don't know. I still think The Walking Dead season one might be superior, but I'm so excited to see at least a lot of Telltale back. To make this game cannot wait we'll be there day one suicide squad killed the justice league i have some issues with you know rocksteady stuff but technically they've never really failed us even with the controversy around arkham knight's launch and everything it was still a great game so i have no real reason to believe this will be anything but a dub but you know let's be real here there are some concerns around just modern gameplay stuff but we'll see i'm still excited because i'm a superhero nerd so i'll be playing it regardless finally it's my number one pick it's the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom of course i've been saying this forever it was my most anticipated for 2022 then it got pushed back so here we are once again 2023 
Tears of the Kingdom. It comes out right around my birthday. I'm gonna be playing it day one. I've been playing Breath of the Wild on master mode, getting ready for it. I am here. I am prepared. I am ready to do this. My biggest concern is we still haven't seen much of it. And I'm of the mind where I don't need a whole lot, you know, because I don't really like spoiling my stuff. I think some marketing teams will show way too much of a game and it just kind of ruins the experience a little bit for me. So it's not like I need to see the entire game. I would like to see a little more detail on how this game's different because not that Nintendo hasn't done direct sequels of Zelda games before, they've made a few, but if you look at like Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, those are two very different games. And what we've seen from Tears of the Kingdom, like yeah, there's a lot of added verticality to it with the skies and stuff, but if that's the only main difference, that main draw, like, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm a little worried. I, I do want to see some stuff about like, how is this going to be different? I really hope they didn't just copy and paste the world, add some textures, add some verticality and called it a day, you know, new story. I really hope we get to see some significant changes here, but either way, I cannot wait to get my hands on this game. I just hope it comes with the announcement of a new switch because I'm tired of this outdated hardware. But that being said, those are the games that I'm most excited for for 2023. Again, do you agree with my picks? Is there some game I missed out on? Because I know there's plenty I missed out on. You know, Fire Emblem Engage, Forspoken, Dead Space, uh, Dead Island 2. There's a lot of really cool games coming out next year. Silk Song, you know, there's so much. It was so difficult to narrow it down to 10, technically 13 games. Um, but let me know your picks down in the comments below. Like if you like this video, subscribe if you want to see more. Happy holidays. I hope you have a good new year and had a good Christmas. All of that. Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever it is you celebrate. And I'll see you guys next time for whatever it is I'm doing. All right. See ya.